Republican Senator Mark Wayne Mullen had quite the heated exchange with Teamsters President Sean O'Brien, Teamsters being the massive labor union. Um, and this was during a Senate Committee on Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions hearing. And it got aggressive, it got heated, started unraveling, and Bernie Sanders had to come in and everyone calm down. Um, and what we're going to do here is look at this clip, quite entertaining, but then use it as kind of a jumping off point to talk about how important labor unions are, the effect of them, um, the benefits, and again, just importance of them and fighting for more union participation, and in the process debunk a lot of the views that Senator Mark Wayne Mullen likely uh, holds. But first, here's this. What do you bring for that salary? What do I bring? Yeah, what, do you, what, do you, what job have you committed or have you, have you uh, uh, started? What job have you created? One job, other than sucking the paycheck out of some other body, somebody else that you want to say that you're trying to provide because you're forcing them to pay dues? And no, then, we don't force them. Senator, you. Already just 16, 18 seconds in, uh, quite the discombobulated question. That's the You're question. You're out of line. Let him Actually, the I question. have it, and no, don't tell me I'm out you of line. You are out of line. Don't tell me I'm out of line. Well, you, you, you frame, don't tell me. You I'm frame, making you statement. Frame, you frame Third, the statement. You need to shut oh, your guy. mouth yeah. because you don't You're know what you're talking about. You're going to tell me to shut my mouth? Yes, yeah. I did. Hold it. Yeah. Hold it. Yes, Tough did. guy. I'm not Senator, afraid of physical. Senator, Senator don't hold it. But don't sit there and tell me I'm out of line. Senator, you made a statement. You asked the question. I didn't ask a question. You did it. I answered the question. You asked the question. About how well, much money? Let him answer. It was, it was a rhetorical Let, well, question. Well, you may think it's rhetorical. It sounded was rhetorical. to me like a question. Let him answer the question. I'm not yielding my time to him. So if you're going to let me keep my time, that's fine. You'll have your time. Let him. You ask your a question. question. He has so, a right to answer that. As far as my salary goes, my salary, if you follow me around, I walk, I actually look at this building. I bet you I work more hours than you do. Twice that's, as many hours. That's impossible. But no, that is, that's true. Sir, you don't secondly, even know what hard work is. Secondly, if you want to follow yeah. my schedule, be Secondly, I'd do it. <laughs> oh, goodness. Goodness, goodness gracious. So it sounded like there, Mark Wayne Mullen said something about, I finished third and stayed. Is that what he was saying? And he is a former MMA fighter, so I guess he was referencing his physical prowess. Which, by the way, before we get into the, labor union discussion it's just strange thing that happens all too often and i'm sure you'll have experiences with this where two guys don't even really have an original beef it just becomes a beef about who could beat each other up does that make sense they're growing up okay randomly a friend or something would say hey you know i could beat you up <laughs> we i would beat you in a fight is this an offer? Are you fi are we fighting right now? Is there something we need to fight over? Or are you just wanting me to be aware of in a hypothetical situation where we do fight, you can dominate. All right, cool. It is duly noted. <laughs> um, that's kind of the energy that that little interaction gave me. Um, very bizarre. And while Mark Wayne Mullen is definitely the antagonist in this story, uh, Sean O'Brien, <laughs> I think, played a little bit, bit too much into the shallow conversation that was being had there but bernie got it under control as much as he could with that being said stick around for this part because even though it's not that not as interesting it's still um or maybe not as interesting to you still very very important so let's start when it comes to labor unions with wages here from the economic policy institute the authors find that unionized workers earn on average 11.2 percent more in wages than non-unionized peers. 11.2% more than non-unionized peers. That is significant. And many might say, well, okay, it would be great if workers could get paid more, but then our economy wouldn't be doing well because productivity would decrease so much. Also here from the Economic Policy in Institute, there's a common myth that unions hurt productivity, supposedly because they impose work rules that uh, make their employers less efficient. The evidence from industrial relations studies does not support this myth. A broad study of the economics literature found, quote, a positive association of unions on productivity is established for the United States in general and for U.S. manufacturing in particular. And as the second chart below reveals, international comparisons suggest that high productivity and very high union density are entirely 
compatible. So we indeed can have better advocacy for workers through collective action. We can have better workplace conditions because of that, higher wages because of that, better benefits because of that, and still have a productive workforce indeed. Which, by the way, I know a lot of people will then say, oh, this particular example of a union making a company less efficient. I'm sure you could provide an example. Generally, though, when you zoom out, that is not the rule. So it is so crucial. We push, uh, push for a more unionized workforce because as this final piece that we'll look at together um, notes, a big, likely big contributing factor to why income inequality is getting so out of whack in the United States and there has been a stagnation um, of wages is because of the lower union participation rate in the United States now compared to decades ago. Here from Fast Company, in the past 40 years, regular working Americans have barely seen their salaries grow while around them the cost of housing and basic needs have skyrocketed as has pay for business executives. What's behind this decline? Economists and political scientists often point to the decline of labor unions in those same years as a major contributing factor to the current environment of soaring business profits and meager worker salaries. So as the power of workers through collective action represented um, as a union has declined, as that has become less significant within our economy, we've also seen all these negative, um, in part, repercussions because of that very reality. And then for the sake of time, we'll skip through this, but I'll put it in the description if you want to read more in detail because so many interesting elements of it. But it talks about a sociology professor um, involved in a study at the University of, of Illinois who found, quote, remarkably robust evidence that the presence of unions created benefits over the course of an individual's career. And conversely, the absence of unions creates barriers to success on a highly personal level. Um, and this analysis followed workers over the course of years and got really interesting information um, from it. But it is so crucial for issues like income inequality, for the wages of workers for their conditions within their workplace that we not just allow not just be okay with but assist in and push for more unionization and increasing that unionization uh, rate within the united states of workers who are indeed a part of a union and even though of course there are issues with unions and plenty of specific examples of real problems with management and all these other things, the direction we need to go is getting more power in the hands of the workers so that the economy is uh, more equitable, more fair, and people can live a good, dignified, um, fulfilling life with the work that they do. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to be a part of what makes this show possible, plus get access to the full video version of the show hours before all the clips are uploaded to YouTube, plus get the full bonus show every single Saturday, you can do so by going to patreon.com slash Luke Beasley. That's patreon.com slash Luke Beasley. Link in the description.